Hey what's up guys, got a little different format for this video, feeling very lazy lately, don't want to use the camera, but anyhow we're going to have a look at Tencent in this video, it's a hot stock, you guys voted for it, very interesting Chinese company, so we're going to review their financial statements and try to figure out whether it's a good deal. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, I do lots of stock analysis and investing videos. So hit that subscribe button if you like that kind of thing, so you can see more videos like this one. Alright, let's get started. So Tencent is a technology company. They have many sources of revenue. The big one I'm very familiar with is WeChat. Super popular among the Chinese community. One of the only apps you can use to communicate when you got people living here in the U.S. back with their families home in China. I've used it before. It's actually very nice. And they have a few others here. You've also got Wayshirt, Tencent Pictures, Tencent Video and Games. And you have some fintech services. So you got WeChat Pay. You got the QQ Wallet. Li Tai Tong, you got credit card repayment, so they're making money in a variety of ways here. And they have their own QQ browser, they got Tencent Maps, so really big company into a lot of stuff, kind of reminds me of Google. Here is Tencent stock, up about 46% over the past year. If we zoom out here over the past 10 years, it's up 1300% with some pretty big drops. There were definitely some buying opportunities there along the way. The PE ratio is ridiculous, 220. So you're paying 220 times earnings. They better be growing them. We're gonna look at that. And the company as a whole is valued at about $750 billion. Again, we're gonna have to see whether that is worth the price. Here are several income statements from Tencent. You can see their revenue going from about 12.7 billion in 2014 all the way up to 73 billion in 2020. Pretty incredible. And the profits have followed. Net income about 3.8 billion dollars is increased every year all the way up till now. Now it's about 24 and a half billion. So here I'm looking at a vertical analysis for Tencent. That's where you take the same income statements, you divide everything by revenue, so everything is a percent of revenue, and this allows us to spot trends. So right away, gross profit as a percent of revenue, aka gross margin, was about 60%. It's actually been trending down, it was about 46% most recently. Really don't like to see that, guys. Let's have a look at operating margin, see if they can make it up there. So operating margin looks like 33%, 35, 33, but then trending down, now we're at 26. So they are having to sacrifice margins, and you know, you hate to see that, but overall they're making more money, so apparently they're selling more total, so that's good. Now, like all large multinational corporations, they are finding a way to reduce their income tax expense as a percent of revenue, so I love to see that. So we look at their bottom, bottom line, net income margin, it is actually very good. So I said margins are declining, but net income margin, at least in the most recent year, is actually 33%, so that is nice to see. Here is Tencent's balance sheet, so really nice balance sheet actually. If you look at the uh, leverage ratios there, liabilities to assets or debt to assets, whichever you prefer, it's very low. You guys have seen my other videos, you don't see them this low that often. Uh, liquidity, no concern here, current ratio, quick ratio, they're actually exactly the same because they don't have any inventory. So, you know, above one, not by much, but above one, so no concern. 
Are they going to get buried by interest expense? No chance. Interest coverage ratio, almost 17. So they can easily cover. They just got to use 1 17th of their profits and pay off that interest. They're a little cash rich. 17% um, of their assets are just raw cash. Uh, luckily, that cash is not in U.S. dollars. You know, you hear me complain a lot about the Fed printing dollars, inflationary concerns there. Well, they're holding Chinese currency, the yuan. If you're enjoying the video so far, please smash that like button. It really helps support the channel. Thank you. Now, when you see that low debt on the balance sheet, you wonder how they feel their growth. It's often by issuing more shares, which dilutes the shareholders. That is kind of what's been going on. Although it's not very dramatic, these are in terms of millions of dollars. So you have about 9.1 .1 billion shares here. And now you're looking at 9.5 billion over the course of about 10 years so a little bit of dilution but not a lot not nothing i would be concerned about this growth in profits is very impressive is it going to continue well let's have a look at what they're investing in so i see they're hiring a lot of employees that usually means they believe in their growth they are committing resources it's also good to see the amount of money they are spending on reinvestments. So most recently they spent about six billion on R and D, about two point three billion on acquisitions, and a little bit under two billion on net capex. Net capex means they spent two billion more than they depreciated. So close to ten billion in reinvestments. Now, why do I care about that stuff? I care because although I'm going to look at analyst forecasts, growth is not free. I need to see that the company is making the investments to experience that growth. So here we're going to look at what analysts are expecting. Very interesting. There are no annual earnings per share estimates available for the company. We do have quite a few analysts making revenue forecasts. And that's all right with me. I prefer revenue forecasts so I can play with the margins and, and see what it's worth under different scenarios. At any rate, for 2021, we are expecting a close to 25% growth in revenue, supposed to get to about 92 billion. That is based on the opinion of 49 analysts, and they're pretty darn sure about it. If you look at the lowest estimate, it's 87 billion the highest is 97 billion so among 49 different analysts the spread between lowest and the highest is only 10 billion so that's a lot of certainty there for the year after we're expecting 20 percent growth we got 50 analysts forecasting that a little more variability for that one. As you go further out, a lot of uncertainty there, a lot of different opinions. The year after that, about 17%, and then 15 So very strong growth expectations for the revenue. All right, guys, so we're going to tie it all together here. Obviously, when I look at the balance sheet, the growth, and the profitability i do like the company i would like to invest in them but i refuse to overpay for anything so let's see if it's a good deal we're going to use an intrinsic valuation model free cash flow to equity model the model says the value of anything should be equal to the present value of all the cash you're going to receive from owning it so let's jump to the spreadsheet and i'll show you what i'm thinking about 10 cent all right, guys, here's what it is. I'm plugging in the revenue growth estimates from Seeking Alpha for the first five years. After that, I'm going to just slowly decrease the growth there, going from 16 down to 12, then 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, and, and, and so on. So that's very typical as a company grows. You're going to have lower growth rates. 
If that's true, the revenues of about $73 billion this year are going to be growing to about $260 billion in 10 years. If that sounds completely unreasonable to you, then maybe I'm being too optimistic here, but that is the average opinion of the analyst. So, okay, you got your revenues. What are your profits going to be? Well, you got to know what your margins are. For all that revenue, how much you get to keep? Uh, obviously, we had great margins this year with 33.2%. I'm going to assume we kind of revert to the mean here. The 10-year average, and we'd be looking at about 28.6%. So if that's true, this is my stream of profit or net income. The next step is to subtract reinvestment needs. And to do that, I'm going to be looking at their reinvestments as we saw there, excluding R&D because R&D is already subtracted to get to your net income. But excluding that, I think reinvestment rates of, you know, 20% and then going down are very reasonable. That gives us reinvestments of, you know, 5.2, 5.5 billion, pretty consistent with what they've been doing and that should fuel their continued growth. That gives me a stream of cash flows. Let's see what the company is worth given these cash flows. All right, guys, only thing I'm really assuming for the terminal value is that after the 10th year, cash flows can grow at 2% per year in perpetuity. If that is true, we have a variety of fair values depending on what your required rate of return is. I put up values anywhere from a 7% to a 10% required rate of return. Now their balance sheet is excellent. They have a great business. They really haven't reported any losses in the past decade. But I will say they are a Chinese company. The quality of financial reporting over there is lower. There's a lot of information risk as we call it. The numbers in these financial statements well, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them, but there very well could be. The likelihood is greater than that of, an, of a U.S. company. So I'm not really comfortable with a 7 or 8% discount rate when I have that risk. I want at least a 9% return, and it's actually 8.9% overvalued if, if I'm looking for a 9% return. Am I being too pessimistic? Is there anything in my assumptions here? All right, guys, one last piece of information to really keep in mind is how likely is this company to beat expectations on the earnings? So if we look at Tencent for the past 12 quarters, they almost always beat their earnings. And they beat them by a fair amount. I mean, look at this, 18.9% beat there, 11.1% beat. Very small beat. Actually, it didn't beat it one time. 2% uh, beat, 11.5%, 16%, 9.7%. So when you put it all together, you have a company here that tends to overperform the analyst estimate. And that's something we have to consider. That's something I have not been considering in my prior videos. Uh, but you have to consider that a lot of these companies, the managers, they play a little earnings game with the analysts. They issue what we call guidance and they guide the analyst to an earnings number. Let's say they guide them to a dollar and ten cents per share because they know they're going to easily be able to beat that number. All right, guys, here is my conclusion on Tencent. It's very close for me. The intrinsic valuation is pretty close. They got an excellent balance sheet. I think it would not be a mistake to go ahead and buy it. The reason is the intrinsic valuation is very close, and you have a company that typically beats the, the forecast. So if I'm basing everything on the forecasting, it's very possible they're going to be able to beat it. The other thing is that their margins could improve. Typically with tech companies, 
as they scale up, you're not going to have a proportional scaling up of, of profits. You're going to have an increase because the costs do not scale up. It's not like a car manufacturer where if they want to have more output, they have to have more factories, more workers, etc. It's really not like that. So as they gain more users on WeChat and things like that, you're not going to see costs go up a whole lot. So I think there's a lot of reasons to buy it. I would highly consider it. The only argument against it is that if you look at their track record, they have not been able to increase their margins. Is that because they were in the early years and making big investments at that time? That could be or it could not be. So that's something to watch for. It's close one. I think I'm going to buy it though. I think the Chinese stocks are being really hated by the market right now. So if there's any time to get in, this would be a time to do it. Uh, that's just what I'm going to do. As always, do your own research. Let me know what you're going to do in the comments below. Thanks for watching.